Awesome. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our military manufacturing virtual orientation. I figure the first thing we should do is go around the room and introduce our team who we have here from the camp staff. So I am Parker. I'm the applications engineer with camps. I'm going to be running the majority of the orientation today. Um, and yeah, that's probably it. I'm going to go on. Jody, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jody Celine. I'm the workforce navigator for camps. I, I look forward to getting to know you and helping you with your resume and keeping in contact with you. Hi, I'm Stacey Buchanan. I'm the associate director with camps and I'm looking forward to working with you and helping you with your transition into the civilian world. Hi, I'm Kirk Davis. I'm the executive director of camps. We're really happy to be with you here today and our whole team will end up working with you at some point in this process. So Parker, uh, thank you. Take it away. Awesome. Okay, well, I think we don't really need to go uh, through any housekeeping items considering this is webinar style. Um, so we can just move on to the agenda and everything. So uh, the reason that you guys, the service members at least are here today uh, is so that we can give you kind of an idea of what the manufacturing industry looks like and help you kind of like envision yourself uh, going into a career in manufacturing potentially, see if that might be a good fit for you. And then also to present you with other uh, tools and resources that you can use to educate yourself and, and further your own knowledge. Um, so we'll skip introductions for, for this uh, seminar today. And uh, I figure the first thing um, I should do is let you guys know that I was in your shoes a year ago. A year ago today, I was in the process of ETSing from the active duty army. I had been in for four years as an army officer. Um, and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I had never had a civilian job. I didn't know what it looked like to interview and do a resume and all of that stuff. So I was pretty nervous and overwhelmed. Um, and I figured just kind of default that I wanted to go into the construction industry because that's kind of what I did in the army. And I had done some volunteer work uh, when I was in high school and knew that I liked construction mainly because I liked building things, seeing, seeing things come together. So I thought I wanted to go into construction, that was my plan, but I just happened to sign up for the military to manufacturing workshop. Um, just, it was on the schedule, I figured why not learn about the manufacturing industry, don't know anything about it. And what really hooked me when I uh, went through with the workshop was all of the cool stuff. One of the things was all the cool stuff that, that they showed me. Turns out manufacturing is about building things too. Um, and not only is it, about like like building a house which is going to take a while and you know there's a certain way it has to be done but in the manufacturing industry there's a wide range of things that you're building um, and projects go pretty quickly and so you're never going to get bored it, it's it's quick and interesting and um, so that was really awesome and then the other thing that hooked me with the m2m program was how much the camp staff seemed to really care. Like I wasn't just a statistic, like an, another number earning them money going through their workshop or something like that. Um, I was talking with Stacy and Jody and they really made me feel like they wanted to help me figure out what my interests are and help me um, find the right fit, something that I would enjoy and the right, you know, culture. And, uh, and so yeah, that was really what sold me on working with M2M. Um, and yeah, so I'll get, I'll get into some stuff that I did later, but, um, but yeah, just wanted to let you guys know that, that I know what it feels like and I know uh, what it's like to not know anything about the manufacturing industry and not know whether you, uh, whether it'd be a good fit for you or anything. So kind of the way I've structured things today is to first let you know what the manufacturing industry is, give you an overview, show you some of the cool stuff that's going on, um, and then tell you about why it's a great, great career field to go into, the diversity of different jobs and fields that you could engage in. Um, it's stable and financially competitive as well. Um, and then also we'll talk about why you're a great fit for the manufacturing industry, why you actually have the skills that the manufacturing industry is looking for. Um, and then we'll tell you about some opportunities that are available within Washington State and within our membership pool and some programs that we have available to you. So yeah, I figure we'll get started. Uh, team, do you guys have anything that you wanna add before, before we start talking about stuff? Well, that was excellent. Good start. Cool, okay. 
All right. So first things first, what is manufacturing? Manufacturing deals with how things are made. I think there's actually a TV show called like how things are made or something. I've never watched it, but that is like right up my alley. I think it's super cool to watch things come together. And when I started getting involved in manufacturing, I started looking at everything differently. Instead of seeing like a pencil, I thought about like, you know, what factory is this made in and like what kind of mold and like how do they put the eraser on and everything like everything you see gets made somewhere in a manufacturing um, plant. Um, whether it's, you know, latex gloves or springs or CDs or ice cream sandwiches uh, or marbles it's really I think it's really cool to like watch videos of how things are created. Um, so yeah, manufacturing touches everything from foods and chemicals to textiles and materials to machines and equipment. It's got literally the entire range. Um, and advanced manufacturing is kind of the intersection between manufacturing, how things are made, and technology, which is really cool. So uh, it involves advanced technologies like 3D printing. If you've ever seen uh, any of those like Nike or Adidas shoes that have like the really fancy patterns in the soles, those are actually 3D printed with like latex or whatever it is coming through um, the nozzle. Uh, and then the shoe is built on top of that. Um, or like our iPhones and whatever smartphone you have, it's got these tiny little screws. And actually a lot of times these days it's robotics that are you know picking up the screws and screwing it together and assembling all of this stuff. Um, or there's like advanced materials that they're coming up with, like, you know, the, the pulp in paper, um, they're figuring out how to get it all to uh, align in a certain direction, which makes it easier, it takes less ink to print on. Um, so there's a lot of really awesome stuff uh, going on out there. And, uh, and yeah, it's really cool to see how it all comes together. And um, quick important note that I, I'll talk about later, I'm sure, but um, if building things and putting things together isn't your uh, interest necessarily. I feel like it's still cool to be around that type of environment because it's exciting. Um, but every one of these companies that makes things has logistics roles. They all have a shipping and receiving department. They have administrative people. They have people that deal specifically with training or operations, manage the people or project ma management. So um, yeah, if, if the actual assembly or engineering type or production type stuff isn't your deal per se, uh, there's still definitely a role for you in the manufacturing industry working with all of this cool stuff. So um, yeah, did I miss anything guys? Anything? I don't think so. Cool, all right. So um, another important thing, I think a lot of people when they think about the manufacturing industry, they picture like grimy factories or assembly lines. And that's actually not what the manufacturing industry looks like these days at all, maybe a long time ago. Um, but lately there's been a huge shift towards advanced technology, advanced like methodologies to keep everything flowing efficiently and clean and everything. Um, so yeah, a lot of these like assembly lines are uh, being worked on by robotics, not in every uh, factory, but, or, you know, all of these machines doing doing all the jobs um, or CNC machines. A lot of our companies have CNC machines that that do the fabrication type processes on the materials um, automatically as well. And there's just a lot of technology being used in the manufacturing industry these days. So it's, it's cool, it's exciting, it's clean, it's um, cutting edge. Um, so this is more what the, the manufacturing industry would look like if you were to work, work with it. Um, and so actually, yeah, we're, we're currently undergoing a shift towards these types of technologies. There's a lot of older companies that haven't implemented them yet, um, but we've got this vision of like the factories of the future that are going to feature all kinds of automation, connectivity between machines, data tracking and analysis to maximize efficiency and productivity within the plant. Um, so I've got a video by Siemens to show you guys that kind of will illustrate um, what, what the factory of the future is gonna look like. In this video, we're going to show you how big, bold technology leaps are enabling sustained productivity gains in UK engineering, manufacturing and distribution, and how you can join in. Right now, in Europe, raw materials, parts and components are making their way independently through the production process. 
with machines, products and sensors spontaneously communicating with one another, making decisions without direct human intervention. The Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre is backing that vision of the future by building a brand new £40 million factory in Sheffield. So we're bringing together industry experts, academics, backed by government to really focus on innovative products uh, for reconfigurable manufacturing. We're here to develop the understanding, adoption and deployment of them uh, throughout UK industry. And we're looking at augmented reality, taking information from the CAD system and displaying it on parts like a, like a wing. Um, and 3D printing is uh, changing the world in terms of the ability to prototype much quicker than we've been able to in the past. That sounds great, but how can businesses get involved? Um, we work with businesses from large OEMs to tier ones and, and SMEs, so really we take inquiries from absolutely anybody. One of the new technologies that's captured everyone's attention is virtualization. The idea is a simple one. You take the miles of conveyor belts, motor drives, scanners, elevators and machine tool components and raw materials and then you put all that information into a software package and create a virtual factory. An exact replica in fact of the real physical factory because the virtual factory enables you to take a real-time big picture view, identify areas where you can improve efficiency, cut out waste and prevent problems occurring in the real factory. But the biggest thing virtualization delivers is the ability to add more innovation, more flexibility, and most importantly, more productivity. Today, every sensor button and monitoring device has the potential to become a participant in the Internet of Things, each with their own IP address. The so-called cyber physical systems will eventually enable machines and workpieces to communicate with one another and make decisions within the process. Employees can use virtualization to check the product meets the required quality standard and is ready to be shipped to the customer. Today, your IT infrastructure is becoming more important than your raw materials, machine tools and physical assets. Cloud technology is enabling infrastructures like this to become part of a global ecosystem of suppliers, partners and customers. A connected supply chain speeding up decision making, collaboration and innovation. The companies who thrive in this new world may not be the biggest right now, but they certainly will be the most flexible in the future, with the ability to customise the product to meet the ever-changing demands of their customers. Customisation is great because it requires zero inventory, everything is made to order and there is no waste. The step beyond customising is individualising. An entire product is made just for one customer. Like most of today's early adopters, we too started by creating a virtual 3D factory using an easy to use software package and this allowed us to experiment with different setups. But there are problems when you start harnessing the Internet of Things and deploying cyber physical systems, you generate mountains of big data. Fortunately, smart systems are now available which make sense of that big data, delivering the factory decision makers the information they need. A typical text message might read, Motor Drive 10 on conveyor belt B requires maintenance. Please press confirm to order the part. Creating your UK factory of the future is going to require skills. People, engineers, technicians. But what skills are going to be needed? Where are these people going to come from? And who's going to train them? To answer that question, I travelled to Coventry to one of the high-value manufacturing catapult centres, the Manufacturing Technology Centre, where they've just opened the Lloyds Bank Advanced Manufacturing Training Centre. There's no point generating the technologies unless you also generate the people who can use those technologies. The engineers and technicians that go through uh, this training centre will have a, a grounding in all of the old technologies but then they will have all of the skills needed for the new technologies that we're developing. So how do our engineering skills in the UK compare to those in the rest of the world? I think the problem we have worldwide is there aren't enough engineers and there aren't enough people coming through with the right skills to really drive the industry forward. The unique thing about the centre is the access that we've got to all of the new technologies that we're developing as part of the Manufacturing Technology Centre itself. And the fact that we've, we've got the people that are developing those processes, that 
can teach uh, you know, the guys in the apprentice centre and really make sure that they've got the skills that they need for tomorrow's industry and not just the skills that were needed for, for yesterday's industry. Creating the UK factory of the future is a big idea. No one company on their own could achieve this. It requires collaboration on a grand scale, a revolution in the way we think, communicate and collaborate. We hope this short video has inspired you and given you an insight into how a revolution in new technologies, Industry 4.0, can enable you to accelerate your innovation, respond to customer needs and drive up productivity. Zooms can help you review your options, overcome challenges and provide the technology, equipment and engineering expertise to build your factory of the future. Give us a call, we'd love to talk to you. That uh, short video was actually kind of long. I definitely watched it on like 1.5 speed when I watched it, so I didn't realize. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think I think that was a pretty cool illustration of of kind of the stuff I was talking about. Important thing to note is that yes, that all took place in the U.S., but Siemens is a global company. That that kind of technology is being implemented here in the states as well. Um, and the thing that I really got out of it, I feel like, is when they talked about how like people are still going to be crucial. A lot of people think all of this technology is coming in and it's going to make people obsolete. It's going to replace everyone. But what these guys are saying is it's going to be really important to have technicians who know how to program and maintain all of the equipment, engineers to kind of like design and build it, um, people who are going to train people on it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of skills. And again, this, uh, this is focusing more heavily on the technical side of people's interests and stuff, but uh, we'll get to those other jobs later. Um, so some of those, here are some of, just a short list of some of those buzzwords that they talked about. Um, the Internet of Things, which essentially means connectivity. You guys obviously saw robotics uh, working and machines working in that, smart machines working in that video. Augmented reality and virtual reality for training or assembly purposes, additive manufacturing, so 3D printing. Um, and so I could talk about this list of things for hours. This is like my, I could nerd out about it, um, but we'll save that for the workshop if you guys show up there, hopefully. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I would definitely re recommend anyone who's interested in any of that stuff, uh, do some Googling on your own and watch some videos. Um, so yeah, we'll, we can move forward, but first, what, is there any, anything guys that I didn't touch on or still good? Cool, okay. So now we're going to talk about why, so that, that was all the cool stuff uh, that we have for today. And now we're going to talk about why manufacturing is a smart choice for you guys to go into, for anyone to go into really. Um, probably the biggest thing is, like I've said before, how diverse the industry is. It touches every other industry. Things need to be made for every industry. So whether that's aerospace or food processing or electronics or life sciences, the medical um, or, you know, the garment industry or the toy making industry manufacturing touches every single one of those so, so the cool thing is that if you try and like get your foot in the door with like an aerospace company because planes sound cool but then you realize that like that's kind of boring and you want to do something like that's working more with people then maybe you uh like that aerospace company might have contacts or we have contacts everywhere but you might uh want to try and get a job like in life sciences working with the machinery that goes into hospitals and stuff like that. So uh, manufacturing is not like a dead end and then you find out that, you know, that's not what you want to do and you have to start over. There are so many different options within the manufacturing industry and our company, Camps, knows companies that, uh, manufacturers that work in every single one of those industries. So we can definitely um, help you out with finding the right fit. Um, additionally, any one of those companies has different departments, like I've been mentioning, that each have different focuses. So over, let's see if I can get a laser pointer. Yeah, here we go. Over here, you have a lot more of like the technical jobs, the fabrication, engineering design, machine shop, um, assembly, but this side kind of addresses a lot more of those like administrative or there's finance or sales or logistics, IT. Um, so within a manufacturing company, maybe if you, uh, you know, get your foot in the door with a company because they're looking for a sales rep and you come in and like get to know the people, um, oftentimes a company will allow cross training. So like while you're doing your one job, uh, you can kind of like 
get a feel for what other people are doing and train on other aspects of the company. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that companies often want to, when they have an opening, they would prefer to hire from within. So when I was interning at a company, there was, there became an opening in like the logistics section. They needed someone who understood the ERP system and could order parts and everything. And uh, they were interviewing people outside of the company, but they ended up picking a woman who worked in a different department because, you know, she's already familiar with the company. People already know her. And also, if she would be more happy in this new job than she was in her old job, then they want to keep her happy and move her into that new job, and then they'll hire out of the company for whatever she was doing before. So a lot of the times, if you just get your foot in the door with one of these companies, you can see that they do all of these different things. Um, and also, uh, and, and yeah, and maybe change what you're doing within the company. And also, if a company like sees potential in you, uh, sometimes they will... Uh, get you like pay pay for some schooling and education as well. So um, as opposed to like going directly into schooling once you get out of the military because you think you want to do this certain thing and then uh, and then getting a job in it and realizing that's actually not what you want to do maybe. And now you've just spent all this time and money uh, learning about that thing. Uh, the manufacturing industry is a great place to just kind of like jump in, get your feet wet, try out a couple different things, see what you might want to do and then companies will, will oftentimes pay um, to get you some education and training in the, the field that you're enjoying, that you're, you know, doing a good job at for them. Um, anything I missed, guys? Anything more you want to say? No, no I mean, I'm not, I, I'll add that, you know, our goal is to help you find the job that you want, not the job that you need. And most, we found that most military positions translate over into manufacturing in some way. So when Parker says, get your feet wet, what we mean is we can take what you're doing in the military and oftentimes it, it when we break it down, it, it turns out to be maybe two or three different civilian jobs. So we can just help you um, get your resume so that it reflects everything that you can do. And then we get your foot in the door, get you into a position that is very similar to what you've been doing and then from there, you can transition into other positions. And what we found with from our companies, the feedback from hiring service members is you typically will run circles around the civilian workers. Um, your work ethic is a little bit different and you tend to um, move up into different positions because in the military, your entire career, you're trying to raise up in ranks. You're constantly doing better and better and better to get to that next level. Um, sometimes you'll see in the civilian world where people are just very comfortable with the position that they have and they're not trying to do better and get promoted and do anything. So it's a really good, um, similar atmosphere for you, environment. I, I just want to mention that uh, as a military member, you have had a lot of professional training, a lot of discipline that, that your civilian counterparts haven't had. So, so you you come in a lot more work ready and a lot more advancement ready than, than say the, per, the regular person off the street. So that's why we highly recommend you. We tell all of our employers that they want to hire, you know, a veteran because, you know, just like Parker, uh, she's head and shoulders, you know, above the rest of us, the way she acts and behaves. So we, we love the veterans. Can you see on screen that I'm blushing or is that hidden? <laughs> Cool. Okay. <clears throat> so the next thing I'll talk a little bit about is the manufacturing sector and why that's a good uh, sector to go into. It is probably the largest sector that contributes to the U.S. economy, so it's absolutely crucial. It's not going anywhere. Um, and so because of that, jobs are, like, people are needed badly. If, if stuff stops being made, then the U.S. can't function. So jobs are, you know, they're, they're always looking for people. Jobs are stable and the pay is competitive. I think on average, uh, manufacturing jobs pay 17% ish higher uh, than their non-manufacturing counterpart jobs, just because manufacturing industry is so important. Um, and a testament to that is that the manufacturing industry made it through COVID. Uh, if anything, they're doing better off than they were before, um, unfortunately kind of, uh, you know, the service industry really st struggled because things had to shut down, as an example, but the manufacturing industry ramped up because uh, we actually had a number of companies that kind of switched their focus to meet the needs of what, like, society needed. Um, 
So we had like a, a plastic injection molding company that switched their focus and started making ventilators because obviously those were in high demand. Um, and we have a distillery that's one of our members uh, that shifted their focus from making liquor to making hand sanitizer, which I'm sure you guys have heard about at this point. That's pretty common. But when they when they made that switch, we were thinking, oh my gosh, like this is crazy. But you know, manufacturing is always relevant, and these guys are flexible. They have the machines and they have the knowledge and creativity and everything. Um, and so, I mean, it's never boring. You're you're always going to be in the manufacturing industry. Um, you're always going to be in need and you're always going to be doing cool stuff something new probably um so yeah good place did i did i forget anything you know no okay sometimes we've got some more stuff but uh cool so how are you a good fit for the industry like we just talked about why manufacturing might be a good fit for you to go into but uh you are actually crazy valuable to the manufacturing industry Right now you're in a transitionary period. You're you're potentially pivoting and like starting over with a totally new career. Um, but the good news is that the manufacturing industry, like Stacy said, you like you'll you'll pro it'll probably feel pretty comfortable, pretty familiar to you. Um, they're they're very similar. Um, just the fact that they're both uh, the military and manufacturing are both like process centered environments um, there's a lot of structure there's a lot of procedures that you have to fo follow there's a whole lot of training um, as opposed to you know like being a, a bank teller or like a cashier at a store um, just to, to contrast it there uh, there's a lot of collaboration within manufacturing a lot of people coming together to get this product made um, and like Stacy was saying just the culture is pretty similar I think that like on the shop floor in a manufacturing plant it'll feel pretty similar to like the way the motor pool felt but like not in a bad way like not the bad things the good things where people are like you know like hanging out and 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 working but also like enjoying each other's company and getting stuff done and working together um so so yeah the good news is you're not going to be like totally starting from scratch um it'll probably already feel pretty familiar and also you are not like entry level into the manufacturing industry by any means that's you know a huge issue when when we've got service members getting out of the military looking for entry level jobs like you guys already have experience and skills that can translate over to the manufacturing industry um your technical skills are desperately needed like we saw in in those videos the fact that you know no matter what your job is every one of you knows how to you know, disassemble and reassemble your rifle and perform a functions check or PMCS your vehicle probably you guys already have kind of that baseline knowledge of things coming together and you know figuring out how things work um and so companies can train you on what they need you to know about but the fact that you have that baseline that's the way your brain works already because you have experience with that you're already like kirk said just like leagues ahead of your civilian counterparts who haven't had that experience you've been working with you know uh some of the most advanced technology in the world already because you've been in the military no matter what your job job is you're just around it already um and also i think kirk mentioned this as well like your your personality traits the discipline that you have the work ethic your ability to take what you know and train other people like that's not normal i mean i was active duty and and then i came out and i thought like that's just what everyone my age is like and it's not the, the military has trained you to be like that um and your civilian counterparts may just be focused on like doing what they're doing and not really training other people to be able to do it or maybe they're just focused on like getting a paycheck and not about like actually getting the job done you know like you guys tend to like stay a little bit late to actually get the job done so um the the biggest issue we've run into with service members um and interviewing is that you guys don't realize that these are incredibly valuable skills and personality traits and everything and you don't always know how to market yourself to these companies um, so we've kind of come up with this skill translation model that looks at uh, specifically the um, knowledge that you have and your experience um, and skills and translates that into uh, something that manufacturing companies are not only going to understand but that they will value they'll hear all of that and they'll understand that you are an asset to them they need you in their company and um oh i lost my train of thought um and yeah anyway uh anything you got, else you got the right idea yeah, yeah. 
I had a third uh, thing and then it just completely exited. That's back. okay. They, you know, I mean, the, the idea is that they, you know, they will transition more easily because of who they are, what they've been through their training. And yeah, you may not, you may think that everybody is this way, but they're not. So, you know, that ability to market yourself is really important. So yeah, you guys do fit in and we help you fit in with our military manufacturing workshop. And I'll add that there, it, there is a, just an enormous amount of figuring out where it is that you fit in uh, with the manufacturing companies. Um, you've made me nervous now, and I've kind of lost my train of thought also. But one thing I think that I usually mention and in, in, when we're talking about this is we're going to teach you the terminology. where You come with those, that basic skill set, but we're going to teach you how it's similar. So one example would be lean manufacturing. Um, you may not know what lean manufacturing is just by hearing about the by the title, but you in the military do after action reviews and that is a lean process. So every single thing that you do in the military, you sit back down and you go over it and you figure out what went right, what went wrong, and how do we do it better the next time. That is exactly what manufacturers are looking for because they are in a constant state of leaning out their processes so that they make more money. So that that's the type of thing that we're going to teach you um, in the workshop. Yeah, Stacy's totally right. That's something that like I took for granted that I'm always looking at something and thinking, how can we do it better, more efficiently? Um, and I didn't realize that a lot of times in the civilian world, people aren't thinking that way and then processes just stay the same because that's the way they've always done them. But uh, every time we've got a service member, you know, stepping into uh, a role in the civilian world, the, the, um, the manufacturers, the company is just like blown away by uh, the way we kind of just like analyze things and always want to make things better and yeah process improvement is a huge buzzword right now in the civilian world and you know Stacy and Jody do a really great job at, at translating that for you and teaching you how to talk about you know the the skills that you have uh, in a way that that is going to be super valuable so yeah come to the workshop we do all of that <laughs> cool okay so now we've talked about uh, what the manufacturing industry is, why it would be really cool for you, you would maybe hopefully enjoy it, and why the manufacturing industry actually needs you. Um, so what do you do next? Washington State is actually a great place to get involved. We have so many huge manufacturing companies. With aerospace, there's you know Boeing and SpaceX around here. Um, in the medical industry, you've got the Hutch Cancer Research Center and the UW um, Hospital. And the maritime side of things, you've got all the ports of Seattle and Tacoma and all the naval shipyards and everything. And small disclaimer, camps uh, isn't, we don't work directly with those large companies, and I'll get to this on the next slide, we work with the smaller companies, but every one of those companies has a supply chain. Like Boeing doesn't make all of their own parts, they get the parts from our company, and then another company assembles them, and then they get sent over to Boeing, and Boeing like does the final putting it together and everything. Um, so the supply chain relationships are just huge. For every large OEM, original equipment manufacturer there is, there's a whole number of uh, people involved in the supply chain, whether they're making parts or doing performing services or, or whatnot. Um, so yeah, Washington is a huge place for manufacturing right now, really great place to be, uh, to be getting your foot in the door in the manufacturing industry. Um, and so this is us, this is CAMPS. We are a nonprofit uh, membership-based organization. Uh, so basically that means that small and medium-sized manufacturers come to us and they become members of our nonprofit in order to um, provide solutions because the larger companies have the money to invest in all this research and try things out and whatever. These smaller companies come to us and we help them out with you know the latest technology and deals on training and stuff like that and a big thing right now is workforce solutions so that's why we're working with you guys who need to find uh you know a good job and these manufacturers these small and medium-sized manufacturers who need good quality workers and we're kind of uh connecting you guys making that um link so yeah and we have all kinds of different members they're not all manufacturers um, and I think I can go on to the next slide. 
because basically so this I, I kind of put this together Stacy has a much prettier version of this with far more companies but I kind of like grabbed a couple of them um, and the general layout is that over here you've got a lot of the manufacturers um, but then we also have like schools and stuff that are uh, affiliates right and then associates I think, or maybe I got that backwards, I can never remember. Um, but yeah, then we have other um, nonprofit organizations and or like consulting or whatever. So these are the manufacturers, whether they manufacture a product like, um, let's see, Orion works in aerospace, they make aerospace parts, uh, key compounding, does pharmaceuticals. This is actually a brewery because breweries and distilleries like Heritage, they make something so technically they qualify. As a manufacturer, we've got Slayer Espresso. Skills Inc. also works in aerospace. They make some of the parts for the for the Boeing planes. Um, we've got Belshaw, which makes uh, like the ovens and fryers for donuts, which is super cool. So if you ever go into a donut shop and you look at like the oven or fryer that they have, more likely than not, it's a Belshaw because they don't have a ton of competition, I'm pretty sure. Um, out of the box up here does electronics, circuit boards, um, we've got some marine guys, maritime guys, uh, and then other people that um, kind of do more services. So for example, like Orion will make uh, a part and or like Mid-Mountain Materials over here makes really cool high-tech uh, textiles and materials like what goes on the outside of the airplane or like a rocket. I'm pretty sure they work uh, making uh, materials that are like uh, temperature resistant enough to like make it into space but also lightweight enough to not weigh down the rocket which is super cool and they like invent that stuff in their lab there um, so like Mid Mountain will make like the panels and then they'll send it to Pegasus for example who specializes in water jet cutting because you can't take these panels and like uh, with, the, with some of the metals you can't weld it because that'll like ruin the metal properties of it and you can't like cut it with a saw because that'll tear up you know a textile or something like that so Pegasus has these machines that um, direct like a high intensity stream of water so much so like kind of like a pressure washer so much so that it can can cut like metals actually um, so because they know each other uh, they you know send their stuff over to Pegasus Pegasus performs the service on it and then sends it up to you know maybe Boeing and then it gets put on the airplane so that kind of illustrates the, the relationship there um, and then yeah and then we have like I said, consultants like Fresh Consulting, um, Coaster Consulting, uh, Resultus Consulting that um, help these companies solve like specific problems. Um, and or we've got Scout Systems and Elevate that work in technology like computer programming. They're working with the Internet of Things and they like write software that fits onto the machines that some of the manufacturers own and collects data and helps maximize efficiency and everything. Um, and then, yeah, and then we've got like schools and other nonprofits that provide training or like the Port of Seattle who becomes a member of camps so that they create all these relationships, they meet all these people, and then they can do business with them. Uh, we've got JBLM, obviously, and Pack Mountain who help us with these workshops and internships to, to help you guys out and get you guys into this whole mix. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is like a drop in the bucket. We have so many companies. These are just some of the ones that I highlighted. Um, but really diverse uh, pool of, you know, specialties and, um, yeah, and the great thing is, like, like I was saying uh, but earlier, earlier on that I had no idea what I wanted to do, but, you know, like, Camps knows these companies intimately, so when I came in, like, Stacy was able to hear me say I like seeing things come together, but I also really want to work with people, and she was able to brainstorm, like, huh, you know, this company might be a good fit for you that you might be interested in life sciences or something. And then I ended up actually doing a, an internship through Pack Mountain WorkX in conjunction with camps at Western Integrated Technologies right here, um, which is a really cool company that does some of the software. They, uh, they're partners with Elevate. They do some of the uh, high tech software stuff. And they also make, um, they, they specialize in hydraulics. So they make hydraulic machines and parts and, uh, and also do a little bit of electronics. And so while I was interning there, I was able to uh, test out the hydraulic cylinders that go on motorcycles to make sure they didn't leak. And I was able to uh, wire together some of the wiring harnesses that go on to some of the uh, Boeing stress testing machines and stuff like that. And so I was able to meet other companies and do some really cool stuff. Um, and, and so, yeah, CAMPS is a great resource because we know all these companies to hear what your interests are and connect you with a company that might be a great 
great fit for you. So um, yeah, anything you guys wanted to add on the company? I was just going to say um, on our website, it, you could take a look at these companies if you just wanted to go to members and click on their logos if you wanted to do any more research on each company. We do some really cool stuff. And I'll add to you that after the workshop, Jody, Jody has taken the time to actually go to all these companies' websites regularly and put together a job list. So anything that these companies have listed on their job board, Jody has a list compiled and she provides that to you after the workshop. So you're able to kind of, you know, fine tune what you're looking for. Very good. Yeah. So that is our community. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. And so what do you do next? These are some of the programs that we have um, available to you guys. And I think they each have a slide, so I'll try not to get too in depth on this slide. But obviously, we have the workshop that we totally encourage you guys to sign up for. It's three days long. So this is like a brief overview. I like ran quickly through some of the stuff. There's a lot more cool stuff um, that we want to tell you guys about and educate you guys on. So day one is a lot of teaching you guys about this stuff, getting you familiar with the vernacular so that you can speak intelligently about it. Day two is a lot more focused on uh, honing your guys' resume and your elevator speech so that you know how to market yourself in a quick 30 second um, spiel to, to companies and tell them what you want. Um, and then on the third day, COVID permitting, uh, we tend to go tour an actual manufacturing plant, which has been, uh, in our experience, an absolute game changer. Every time we have someone that's kind of on the fence and they're like, yeah, this sounds cool, but like, I don't know if it's really for me, they come on the plant tour and they're absolutely sold. They see, first of all, how cool everything is. And second of all, how much everyone kind of enjoys what they're doing. For the most part, in, in, in our companies, they're small companies uh, that really care about their people and it really feels like a family. Um, and so, yeah, getting out there and seeing what these companies look like is, uh, has been pretty awesome. Um, and then after you complete the three-day workshop, we are available to you forever. So uh, we hold networking events actually for our companies. Like our main focus as an organization is on our companies, um, but we also run this program on the side um, because we care about veterans and uh, because it, you know, solves uh, a problem for, for our companies. But we run these networking events to get companies talking to each other. And anyone who has completed our workshop is welcome to come to any and all of our networking events. Uh, they usually uh, get up and, and give their elevator speech. Um, and when I was an M2M grad and was looking for a job, Stacy made me get up and do my elevator speech every time, which I hated because I was freaking out. Um, but let me tell you how valuable it was. Like, I felt like I totally botched it every time, but every single time I told them, hi, I'm Parker, I'm interested in electro electrical engineering. This is, you know, some of the experience I have. Quick little spiel. Um, I had a number of companies come up to me and hand me their card and say, hey, like you should definitely reach out to us. We do this and that and we're looking for an electrical engineer. We're looking for a project manager and you sound like you would be a great fit. Um, so these networking events are huge in terms of meeting companies, getting your face out there, you know, getting a, a connection. And every time those companies told me to send, send them my resume. Um, so awesome connection opportunity. Um, and then we have a couple other programs that we run, which I'll try not to get too depth into, because um, again, I could talk about it for days, particularly the robotics program, but it's got its own slide, and then also internships like the one I did. Um, and then I, I have a slide uh, with some stuff you can look up online if you're interest, interested in furthering your own knowledge on your own time. But yeah, so the first thing we'll do is uh, watch this video on our M2M program and what it's like. Dedicating one's life to a greater cause is a pursuit worth honoring. Unfortunately, for many veterans leaving the military, their dedication to service sometimes goes without receiving any honor. But thanks to programs like M2M, the Military to Manufacturing Program from CAMPS, a Washington State Advanced Manufacturing Organization representing highly innovative small and medium manufacturers and supply chain companies, helping veterans find purpose again in the form of work, is an honor that is changing the lives of service men and women for the better. The M2M program helps service members identify the experiences that they've had in the military 
and how those experiences can be translated into things that the manufacturing world will value and recognize. When you're in the military, and I, I myself am a retired Air Force, the value of a service member's experience is that you have all the disciplines of good employment, you have the disciplines of following instructions, attention to detail, and then you have all of the jobs that you've done in the military, and there's things in every job that you've had that will have translate into similar jobs in industry. M2M is helping advanced manufacturing companies offer career opportunities to veterans who are perfect fits to help advance manufacturing into the 21st century. I think it brings a stable workforce to the manufacturing world. It brings a workforce in who are dedicated, who knows what it means to be a team player, and they have the drive and the motivation to see that company succeed. For veterans, M2M teaches how to translate the foundational skills they already have to work in environments using advanced technologies, advanced materials, international quality standards, and global logistics practices. In a two-day workshop, they learn how this industry-focused and employer-driven program informs and prepares veterans for entry-level, semi-skilled, skilled, and leadership positions in the manufacturing industry. It gives a veteran or somebody transition out of the military another aspect, another path to take other than what they've been doing their time in the service. Here's another whole world that you could probably explore and find an opportunity to get a job in. I was like, I've done 30 years worth of airplanes. Let me try something different. Manufacturing seemed like a good fit, so I attended the M2M conference where they took the two days to walk us through a resume and kind of teach the language and the lingual for what you're going to do and, and kind of prep you for interviews. Did a couple of social events with them where you're kind of talking with prospective employers. Went to their big seminar that they had up at Emerald Downs where I met Chris Caldwell, the gentleman that is the president for the company that I work for, and we got to talking over a beer. Just a connection we made and we got to talk. We said, like, hey, I'd like to come by and see your facility. And he said, come on down. And the, that next Monday, I went down. I got there about 9 o'clock, and by noon, had an offer on the table. Camp Snow's military personnel are natural leaders, skilled in operating advanced weapons, communication, and support equipment, and have readily transferable skills. The executive director is a veteran himself and understands the skills, experiences, and motivations of veterans that make attractive candidates for employers. What camps did is gave me a, a brief exposure to the concepts of manufacturing and how our skill sets apply in the manufacturing world, and then the invites to events where the leaders of those organizations are meeting for their own purposes was what was crucial to me to start seeing how I could fit in this world and be part of this community. I think it'll behoove any company out there to take advantage or even look at hiring a veteran of any military component. The beauty of the MTM program is it's like the Rosetta Stone. You take those great skills, each profession has its own language, and now you take those military skills, translate them directly into industry and manufacturing, you make a match, in many cases a perfect match like it was for me. For more information about the M2M workshop, contact Camps today by going to their website at camps-us. Dot com. You guys want to add anything to that? Um, no, I'm, I might explain the membership um, or the members of camp. So we have the manufacturing members um, and the supply chain members. We have the associate members, and I'm mentioning them because, um, like, Fourth Avenue Media is who made that video for us. They're a media company that's a member of camps. Um, all of the associate members are gonna be like your banks and your consulting firms and your accountants and things like that. And then we've got the affiliate members, which are gonna be other nonprofit organizations, um, government, and then education. So all different types of companies that are going to be in your, you, because you're able to utilize our entire network for your job search. So if you enjoy teaching, well, we have colleges that are always looking for instructors. You know, if you're looking to work in consulting or really if you've got maybe a Six Sigma black belt um, and want to get into consulting, we've got companies that do that too. So we really try to 
say you don't have to be super geared up for um, manufacturing. Um, we just need to take what you do in the military or what you want to do and figure out where you fit within these companies. That's really good. Oh. So this is kind of an outline of the process of our M2M workshop. You sign up, you show up on day one, the first thing you do is uh, sign a or, or complete an intake form, which gives us a background on, um, you know, what your MOS was, what your experiences are, so that we can kind of uh, chew in in our heads on uh, where you might fit well. And then we have you all take the Wisen test of mechanical aptitude, which is an aptitude test. It's not like a pass fail, like we don't want to work with you. It kind of gives us an idea of how your brain works. Um, so people that score high on the on the Wisen test, um, their their brain is kind of like able to manipulate objects and uh, um, and those are those tend to be the people uh, that want to do the more technical jobs. And then, um, you know, the other side is, is people who, um, who are more interested maybe in, in the, the people aspect side of things um, or uh, maybe crunching numbers or something. Um, so that, that's just a useful tool for us as well to, to have you take. Um, and then we do some paperwork and then we go through the, the workshop, which I've described a little bit already. Um, yeah, and the point for us, especially on day two, is to get to know you, understand your background so that we can brag about you to our companies and we can teach you how to brag about yourself as well. Um, and then we have you complete a resume uh, on day two before attending the plant tour because oftentimes we've had people attend the plant tour and um, we have you each announce, uh, do, do your little elevator pitch and the company, you know, sometimes is looking for uh, exactly what experience you have and they ask for a resume on the spot. Um, yeah, and then like I said, we're always available to you uh, for assistance in interviewing um, and, and honing your resume. We have um, an M2M graduate who ended up taking a job with a non-CAMPS member and now he's actually kind of rethinking what he wants to do, so he reached back out to us and asked if we would still help him out, uh, update his resume with that experience, talk to CAMPS members, um, and practice interviewing again. And yeah, absolutely, of course, we're excited to work with him and excited to maybe get him a position within our network. So we're, we're always here for you guys um, once you've gone through our workshop. By the way, oh, yeah. what I just wanted to say back on that is that we've had so many comments from people who've gone through it that this was different than any other class or course or workshop they've ever been to on, on, in their transition journey, that it's so personalized and it, uh, they felt like we really got to know them and we do, we really get to know you. And then we, we, you know, everything we do is designed to help you get the right job fit. And so you'll be working with Jody uh, throughout the class and then after the class, uh, you know, she's our workforce navigator. And of course we all chip in and work together, but um, you're, you're in good hands with us. Yeah, we on day two, we just really like to get to know what your goals are, what would be the perfect job for you. And, you know, we just would want to make that uh, as easy as possible to get you in the right position. Yep, and it works. I can, I'm a testament to that. They <laughs> had some awesome opportunities. But then they gave me the ultimate opportunity, which was to work with them. So, yeah, I got it. Yeah. True story. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm biased, but um, so this is actually the program that I'm working primarily on um, and it's a grant that we got um, and yeah, Robotics Workforce Readiness Program uh, led by CAMPS. Uh, basically, we take service members who are interested in working with robotics as robotics technicians like you saw in the video, that's going to be huge going forward. And so the first step is that we put them through uh, an 11 week long course at the local technical college, Clover Park. Um, and then after that, sometimes we've had uh, students want to continue on with their education. So they did that portion of the course um, and then they uh, ended up pursuing um, an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. But the, the vision for this program was that you would complete the FSME uh, course. And then after that, we would get you an internship with one of our companies that uh, is working with robotics or technology. So you would work alongside it and actually get your hands on it and learn how to um, program it and maintain it and everything. And that would be within your, um, your eligible 
to do that program, be excused from duty to do that program within your last six months, which we'll talk about more on the next slide. Maybe I should have had those backwards, but um, yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about that more in the workshop as well. Um, but yeah, basically within your final six months before ETS, uh, the military is willing to excuse you for up to 20 weeks, depending on what you're doing. Um, and the structure of that is that you spend four days a week doing whatever it is you're doing, the, the career skills program. So whether that's, you know, going to school four days a week or um, at an internship four days a week um, or what have you. And then one day a week, you still uh, re report to your unit if in case you need to in a cup or uh, take a PT test or something like that uh, to maintain their numbers. But um, yeah, we can also, so this is the, the type of internship that I did and I did it with Western Integrated Technologies. Um, you can do a specific internship like Skills Inc. does an aerospace planning and production internship um, with the goal of getting you hired at, in that position at the um, completion of the internship or you can design it kind of like I designed mine. Uh, we'll work with you to, to create whatever you want to create where I kind of hopped around between departments. I spent the most time in the engineering department, a little bit on the shop floor assembling things, spent a little bit of time in the sales department, realized I definitely didn't want to go into sales and spent a little bit of time with admin and IT just to get a feel for how they all work together um, to accomplish the mission. So uh, that was so valuable for me, a game changer. And the great thing about that is not only do you get your feet wet, you get a little bit of experience and hopefully you'll get hired on after that. But also if you know there's something else you're interested in, you can change your course because you're not committed to anything yet. Um, but also it gives you uh, something that you can throw on your resume in addition to your military experience um, to make you more valuable, marketable. Um, and also it gets you some contacts. You know, all of a sudden now I had a bunch of people working for a manufacturing company that could write me a letter of recommendation um, or connect me to, to other companies. Uh, so highly recommend doing one of these internships or the robotics program. Anything else you guys want to add on the internships? No. Um, I was just going to add that uh, you would be working with by 25 so you don't have to use um, your, uh, I yeah. forget the name. What yeah. was it? GI Bill. Yes. Good point. Yep. So none of that is coming out of your own pocket. It's all funded through the DOD, which is exciting. Definitely take advantage of it. No downside. Yeah, so this is just a slide that I threw together in case you're interested in Googling um, any of the cool technology that we've talked about. Um, you know, you can find videos on YouTube, look at all the cool stuff. Uh, I've also found a number of uh, online classes, especially the UR Academy. Universal Robots is a company that makes, builds collaborative robots, and they have this free online academy that teaches you how to program it, and it's super simple to do. So if you're interested in that at all, I would definitely recommend checking it out, making an account. It's all free as are, I mean, I've taken lean manufacturing courses on Coursera or LinkedIn Learning, which is free to you as a veteran. If you didn't know, I won't get into that now, but if you reach out to us, we can tell you how to sign up for it um, for free. And then webinars, especially with COVID going on, there's a ton of online webinars happening through Industry Week, Siemens, or the ARM Exchange, Advanced Robotics for Manufacturing Company. They all put on informational webinars, which is full of really great, um, useful information. And I've created an online group uh, through a platform called Workplace. It's made by the same people as Facebook, so it looks very similar. So if you take this link and you type it in, and you, if you want to join the group, I'm constantly posting new resources on there. And we can also create a community where you guys can type in the chat and ask us questions or ask each other questions. Um, but if you don't want to join the group, I mean, that's, that's mainly geared toward tech, tech technology and the Industry 4.0 stuff. Um, so if you don't want to join the group, uh, you don't have to, but definitely uh, take down our contact info and reach out to us if you have any additional questions or if you just want to chat and um, and get some more resources or anything. So my email is over here. Happy to talk about any of this nerd stuff anytime. Um, and I know that any of us would be happy to talk to you about anything. So, yeah, that's all I got. That was great. Good job. Yeah. Cool. Anything well, else you guys got? Or we call well, we're looking forward to getting to know you. We appreciate you uh, watching this orientation and making the decision to come join us in our two-day workshop. Absolutely. We hope to see you there. Ooh. Good job.